Hi, engineers. In this video today, we're going to be talking about the cerebellum. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much for all the support you've been given here to Ninja Nerd Nursing. If you do like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and then check out ninjanerd.org. All of our notes and illustrations and some of our merch is available there as well. As we continue on with our central nervous system, we're going to be focusing now on the cerebellum. So we talked about the cerebrum first, which is this portion of our brain up here. And now we're going to talk about the cerebellum right here, this area at the posterior portion of our brain, inferior to our cerebrum. And what it is here is it's located right there, and we call that the cerebellum, also known as little brain. And we can see here that the cerebellum is under the cerebrum and it's also posterior to the brain stem. And as we're looking at this, we can see that this is anterior, this is posterior. We're looking at the cerebellum right here. We can also view it from post. This is a very rough drawing for now. I have a more detailed drawing in a minute. But we have the posterior view and you can see that there's actually two lobes here of the cerebellum. So we have a left and a right lobe. And as we talk about the cerebellum, I think it's really important to understand what the purpose of the cerebellum is. The cerebellum does a lot of, I picture it as like the fine tuning. Like the cerebellum is gonna take information that it gets from the brain and the spinal cord, the brain stem, and it's going to fine tune or critique all of that information. The information that it's particularly critiquing are things like coordination or coordinated movement. So if you think of somebody who is really coordinated or has a, um, like good coordination, you can also look at them and think, okay, they also have really good balance. And when you think of balance, you can also think of equilibrium. When we look at this, we can also think of somebody who having very good posture or having posture. So if we're looking at this, the cerebellum takes care of our coordinated movement, our balance, our posture, our equilibrium. And what we can take from this is how the brain talks to or the, how the cerebellum talks to the cerebrum and the cerebrum talks to the cerebellum. In doing so, we need to go over some anatomy really quickly. So this is a lateral view here that we're looking at. Just to orient ourselves really quickly, we have our brain stem right here. We have then our cerebellum. Within our brain stem, we have our midbrain, our pons, and our medulla oblongata. And then we have our fourth ventricle here, which our cerebral spinal fluid can go through. And then we have our cerebellum. Now our cerebellum is similar to the cerebrum, and then it's got the left and the right hemisphere, and it also has some lobes. So when we look at this, we have three lobes of the cerebellum. The first one is located here, which is considered our anterior lobe. Back here, if we're looking at this, is our posterior lobe. And then right here, this little area, which is right here, is our flocular nodular lobe. And if you remember back to when we talked about our cerebrum, with our lobes that are usually delineated or separated by different fissures. There's two fissures here that you need to understand. The first one is this long one right here, separating our anterior and our posterior lobe right here. This is our primary fissure. And then we have our other one right here, and this is separating our flocular nodular lobe from our posterior lobe, and this is our posterior lateral lobe, or fissure, posterior lateral fissure. So now that we have our fissures on our lobes, a couple of things we need to understand is there's all these different grooves and bumps within our cerebellum, and those are called our folia. Those folds help increase the surface area, which is going to help us increase the amount of cell bodies and dendrites and nuclei that we can have within our gray and our white matter. So within our gray matter, we have, you can see that here, that is our cerebellar cortex. So all this pink is representing our gray matter. And then in here, all this white is our white matter, and that is our arbor vitae, or tree of life. All right, engineers, now that we talked about the gray and the white matter, we're gonna talk about the cerebellar nuclei. So we're looking at a superior view of our cerebellum cut down so that we're able to see deep within this white matter and see, quote unquote, this nuclei, because you can't really see it. But what we're looking at here is we still have our left and our right, lobe. We have an area in the middle here called the vermis. And then we have our deep cellular bell nuclei. So our deep cellular bell nuclei are located deep within this white matter, right? So you can picture it kind of up in here. It's really deep within. 
and they play a role in this fine tuning of repetition and skills. So think of things like playing instruments or learning a new skill within a sport or a new hobby that requires a new skill. This is where that really repetitive nature of practicing a skill is going to take place and this nuclei is going to help with that. It's going to help with that fine tuning, that fine motor and that body awareness of being able to make that movement and do it over and over again. So within the cerebellar, nucle cerebellar nuclei, there are four that we have here and they're nicely, I think, colorized for this um, drawing here. So we have four different ones. So we have a purple one here, a blue, a red, and a green. But you can see that they're mirrored. So on one side versus the other side, they are mirrored. And there's a nice funny saying that is known for this. It is called, don't eat greasy food. Or you can also do, don't eat gassy food. I always like to say gassy food. But anyways, they stand for D, E, G, and F which are these nuclei right here. And you have to go from the lateral to the medial, vice versa over here, lateral to medial. And what you're seeing is don't eat greasy food is standing for the name of each nuclei, right? So we have the dentate, the emboliform, the globose, and the vestigial. And each one of them have a very similar but slightly different distinct job. So right here, as we look at the dentate, the dentate is the one that we're going to use for skilled voluntary movement. Okay, we, We're learning this movement. It's really, really skilled. It's something that we want to keep understanding and knowing how to do. So we got to keep practicing it and keep using it. So like we said, skilled voluntary movement and fine motor, being able to really nail down that skilled movement. The emboliform and the globose they're located in the middle here. They're also known as the interposed nuclei. They have a very similar, almost the same job. They have the distinct ability to use distal limb and understand muscle tone. So understanding the focus of your distal limbs, where they are, and the tone of the muscle. And then we have our last one here, our vestigial. Our vestigial is the most medial. And what we have here is the axial and proximal limb movement, but it also has to do with the ability of posture and balance. So as we're using our limbs, we're still be able to maintain that posture, maintain that balance. So why are we bringing this up? Why are we talking about the cerebellum nuclei? I want you to kind of always remember the cerebellum as your your center resource of your body that is being able to say, this signal's not good enough, it needs to be this, or it, it fine tunes all that information from the brainstem, the cerebrum, into the cerebellum, and then back out. So it, it's kind of like your, your checkpoint system. It's making sure that these, these messages that are coming through for all of our motor and our movement and our fine tuning of our posture are centrally coming through the cerebellum. And then deep within the cerebellum are these nuclei that are fact checking some of those signals. So now that we understand the cerebellum nuclei, let's quickly look at a couple other uh, anatomical positioning of the brain in the cerebellum, and that way we can talk about all of our functional regional zones and our peduncles. Now in insurance, let's quickly just orient ourselves really fast with our anatomy here. Let's recall real quick about the cerebrum here. We have our left and our right. We're looking at this at a posterior view, and we're able to identify some lobes. Up here we have our parietal, here we have our occipital, and then on the lateral sides here we have our temporal. Right? And I just want you to understand that so that you get a little more orientation on where the cerebellum is. So the cerebellum then has a left and a right hemisphere, and also has this area in the middle here called the vermis. What you'll see here is not only are we looking at the left and right hemisphere, we can also see within our cerebellum the posterior lobe. And this is important because when we're looking at a lateral view. And if you were to picture the cerebrum on top here, it actually touches right here and kind of covers. So when we look at it in a posterior view, we don't necessarily see the anterior lobe. So real quickly, as we're looking at the cerebellum here, we have our anterior lobe, our posterior lobe, and our flocular nodular lobe with our primary fissure right here and our posterior lateral fissure. What I want you to understand from this diagram and the whole purpose of this 
is to move on to the next part, is that the cerebellum, like we said, has lots of folds, the folia, it's all kind of wrapped up and curled up. So I kind of picture it as like a flower that's curled in on itself. What we need to do in order to understand all the functional regions and zones is we're gonna unravel, we're gonna open up the cerebellum. When we do that, we can then see, now we have our anterior lobe, pink on top, posterior in the middle here, purple, and our follicular nodular here at the bottom. And then we have our two fissures, our primary fissure here, and our posterior lateral fissure here. Now, we're looking at it unfolded. It's kind of like this linear blob, little slug looking thing. We're gonna take this, and now that it's open, we're gonna look at it from the posterior view, and we're gonna be able to identify all of the zones in the functional regions. Now we're gonna talk about the zones and the functional regions. Don't freak out, because I know there's a lot of colors going on here. But I want you to quick, we're gonna orient ourselves to what we're looking at here. We just took our cerebellum, we unraveled it, we turned it on its side, or its back, and now we're looking at it posteriorly. So the colors are the same as before. Pink here is our anterior lobe, posterior is the purple, flocular nodular is the green, I mean the green, the orange. Then we have our posterior lateral fissure right here, and our primary fissure, okay? So lobes, anterior, posterior, flocular nodular. So far, so good. Now, we're gonna talk about these zones real quick. Just regions, areas for you to understand what we're looking at. If we broke down, we can see through the middle here, through the vermis area, we have separate areas, right? We're looking at, we have our zone one here, which is in the middle, which is our vermal. So that's the area between the dotted lines. On the side of either, each lateral side, we have our paravermal, the areas on either side. So one's in the middle, there's a paravermal here on the left and a paravermal here on the right. And then we have zones three on the outside, lateral side of either, and it's called lateral. Now that we understand the zones, we can then walk and talk about the functional regions. So within our cerebellum, we have different functional regions, and these regions play a core part in different functions, okay? And if you haven't understood or gotten this concept yet, everything within the cerebellum and the cerebrum, they play a minor part in certain other areas. So some will do arms and legs, some will do the eyes and the neck, some will do the head. And together, all of those checks and balances allow for us to have our movement and our ability to have posture. And the functional regions are no different. So within the functional regions, we have three the spinal cerebellum, the cerebrocerebellum, and the vestibulocerebellum. So quickly, before we even talk about what they do, let's just look at where they are on here. You can see that the pinkish reddish here, spinal cerebellum is in the middle, which I think helps if you orient yourself with your spine, right? Your spine's down the middle of your back, unless you have some other condition. Typically, the spinal cerebellum, right in the middle here, this pinkish red, so it encapsulates the vermal and the paravermal regions. The cerebrocerebellum are your lateral zones, and then the vestibulocerebellum is our flocular nodular lobe. So it's a completely different portion. Okay, so far so good. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna talk about the spinal cerebellum. The spinal cerebellum is the part of the cerebellum that deals with the limbs. So we're gonna be dealing with the length of the limbs, the positioning of the limbs, and really coordinating all that movement. And when we talk about limb length and position, we're talking about that tone of the muscle, right? We're talking about the ability for our awareness of the tone. Do we need more muscle tone, less muscle tone, things like that. The cerebrocerebellum, located on these lateral sides here, has to do with the planning of movement and the coordination of movement. So you can think of it as something simple as when you're walking, you're gonna see maybe something on the sidewalk that you want to maybe step over. So you're going to see that, your body's going to be aware of it, you're going to plan to step over that, okay? Uh, but you can also think of it as more skilled, like an athlete, someone who's playing soccer, they're seeing a defender coming up to them, they're getting ready to plan to make a move, they're going to do that specialized move that we've learned about before, and then continue on. And it's going to make everything look nice and smooth and fluid, okay? And the last functional region is the vestibular cerebellum. Like we said, the flocular nodular lobe. Uh, this one is I th my favorite, I think. It has to do with st eye stability, so keeping the eye movement along with your neck and your head, so keeping it 
all stable, meaning that when you move your head, your eyes aren't just like jiggling around in there, but you have stability of if you want to focus on something and move your head, your eyes are going to be able to focus on that object. Okay, so now that we got a general overview here of our functional regions, we're going to quickly now focus on our peduncles. Fun word to say, peduncles. Peduncles are the portion that brings all this together, right? We have been saying that the cerebellum talks to the brainstem, talks to the cerebrum, talks to the rest of the body, but there's actually a way that those messages get sent, and they're through the peduncles. And each peduncle, we have three of them, superior, middle, inferior, drawn right here nicely on our diagram. Very generic, okay? It's not the most accurate positioning, but it's just for you to understand that within this area is where all of those signals are going in and out. And each peduncle plays a role in different ones. You can see that there's afferent and efferent for two of them, and middle only has afferent. So let's talk about that now. We first have our superior peduncle. Our superior peduncle, superior peduncle, it's hard to say, <laughs> has an afferent that helps to do with our proprioception, our ability for our bodies to know where our limbs and where we are in space. Our superior peduncle gets that information, gets our information on where all of our limbs are, what we're doing, and then has an efferent message to say, let's plan, let's coordinate. So we need to lift our leg higher, we need to move our arm like this, we need to do this with our torso in order for us to understand the movement here. So this has to do with the influencing of the planning and preparing of that coordination. So we talked about the superior, let's talk about the middle. The middle is the big, big, biggest peduncle, and it has an afferent tract. The afferent tract is the information from the premotor and the motor cortex. It's just taking in some information and being able to analyze and read that information. And now we can go on to inferior. So inferior has an afferent tract and an efferent tract. Our afferent tract is bringing in balance and space orientation. So a little different than proprioception. Space orientation meaning how far of a distance I am to something. Not necessarily where the arm is, but how far of a distance is something away from me. Then the efferent is going to send out information about our balance and our posture. How are we going to fine tune that in order for whatever movement we want to occur take place. So that is it, Ninja Nerds. That is our entire video here on the cerebellum, a very watered down overlook on the function and the anatomy of the cerebellum. So I hope you learned something. I hope it made sense. And as always, until next time.